So welcome back to the core online learning. Today we are going to be going over unseen poetry and how we approach longer questions on our literature GCSE exam papers. Do not forget to like, subscribe and to comment if there's anything else that you want us to go through. So the first thing that you should do right now is pause this video and read through the poem after reading the question. So how is nature presented? So pause that now. Now, after I have read the question, that's when I read the poem normally, because this is really important as the examiner is often trying to give you a hint. Now, this poem is pretty obvious that it's about nature. So I can I can really see that the examiner is pointing me in a certain direction. In a lot of poems that I have seen used in different exam papers across AQA, at Excel, for example, they it's not always clear. So sometimes the question is a really nice, big, glaringly obvious clue for us. For example, last year's paper for AQA, the 2023 paper, there was a poem that some people thought was about building. And people who didn't read the question properly would have been talking about buildings building a house, building any kind of building, really. But the question said, how does the poet re uh, present relationships? So actually, it was a poem about building relationships. But what they were linking that to was a building and how we build that up. So that leads me on to my next point in that actually, if you have a look at a lot of the patterns of these exam papers, uh, the examiners tend to choose poems that have an extended metaphor. So we can see in this one that the extended metaphor is nice and clear. But in the one I was just talking about, actually, to some people, it might not have been clear that the poet was specifically talking about a relationship. So that's why it's nice to read the question first. Actually, it's vital to read the question first, not just nice. So this one's pretty obvious. We've got this idea that nature is a fist. Now, remember it has to go through the entire poem to be an extended metaphor. So you can see where I've highlighted this idea that nature is a fist that is pounding on the door because it comes up in the first stanza. The idea that it's a fist or that it's quite violent comes up in the second, the third and the fourth stanza. It's repeated again in the fifth stanza and we see it again in that sixth stanza. So I know it's an extended metaphor and I know it's going all the way through the poem. Now, this is really going to inform a lot of what I write in my essay. So if I can spot an extended metaphor, I've really got a huge point to talk about. And I can talk about how that metaphor is shown in every single stanza. So if I really can't think of anything, and if you're one of those kids who sits there and says, I don't understand this unseen poem. If you can start training yourself to spot an extended metaphor, if there is one that year, it's really, really useful because actually it's something that you can have a look at in every single stanza. So actually the metaphor is used in the first stanza to show this. The metaphor is used in the second stanza to show this. And you can go all the way through. So it is really key and it is really, really useful. So I do recommend doing some practice on spotting an extended metaphor. Then what I would do is go to the last stanza. Now, this may sound strange to you that I go to the last stanza, but if you have a look at a lot of the unseen poetry papers across all the boards, all the exam boards, you will notice that actually a lot of them have a sort, a lot of the poems have a sort of summary in the last stanza. There was a really interesting one by Maya Angelou about aging. And in the last stanza, she summarises exactly how she feels about ageing and how she doesn't want to be treated any differently because she's ageing. So you will notice a lot of them in last year's AQA paper where they're talking about relationships. They talk about letting the scaffolds fall, confident that they have built their wall, which basically means that they don't have to support their relationship a lot anymore because their relationship has been built confidently and well over the years. So it is a really good technique to do. So I always check the last stanza for a message. And I think you can find one in this poem in particular. The truth is it doesn't have to knock. It can hit us when it wants. 
And I think what this poet is trying to show is that nature has the freedom to do what it wants when it wants. And that is really shown in this. It doesn't have to knock. So they feel like it's knocking on that door. They feel like it's trying to get in. But actually, it doesn't have to knock. It will just get in. It can do whatever it wants. So it really shows that dangerous and powerful nature of nature, if you will. So once I've figured out what the message is from the poet, I'm going to use that to form a line of argument. Now, your line of argument is an introduction that you are going to keep linking back to again and again and again. Now, that's important because your line of argument, your introduction, it should really lay out the writer's message because that's where you're going to get most of your marks. So the majority of your marks are going to come from understanding what the writer was doing and the fact that they were trying to do it deliberately. So have a look at my first introduction. I've done this, I've sort of differentiated this so you can see. If you are aiming for a four plus, have a look at my first example. If you are aiming for a nine or something close to a nine, a seven, eight or nine, look at my second example. So in Punch, the poet presents the idea that nature is incredibly powerful and has complete freedom to do what it wants. Their poem negatively represents nature as dangerous. This is important. This is a good introduction for anyone aiming for a four plus because it's really saying what the poet was trying to do. And I want you to just keep that in your head. What is the poet trying to do? What is the poet trying to show? If you're not keeping those questions in your head, then you are not going to be getting the same marks that you could be getting if you did keep those questions in mind all the time. Now, if you're aiming for a nine, you want to go into as much detail as you possibly can with their message and to really explain it in a lot of depth so what you'll notice between a sort of four plus essay and a top scoring essay is the depth of the writer's intention the writer's message the writer's feelings they'll be really clear so in punch the poet intentionally presents nature as all powerful with the liberty to choose when it inflicts damage on people throughout the poem we see the anger of nature as the writer builds a threatening persona around nature so it's very similar to the four plus introduction, but it is a lot more in depth. So that's really important. Depth is your friend. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to begin by discussing the extended metaphor, if there is one. So if you can find an extended metaphor, then you're going to begin by discussing that. So if you're aiming for a four plus, let's have a look at how we would present an extended metaphor in our essay. So the poet uses an extended metaphor of nature being a fist. Fists can owe anger and danger because they are associated with violence. The writer does this to show how violent nature can be. Also, the writer says the fist pounds on the door. The word choice pounds is important because it shows nature is threatening the speaker and frightening them. This is good. This is getting marks because they are zooming in on word choices. Word choices are a great technique to zoom in on. And if you can't find any techniques whatsoever and you're really unsure zoom in on the word choices because that's still going to be getting you marks so don't sit there and give up and say I can't spot a simile I can't spot a personification zoom in on the word choices zoom in on the adjectives the adverbs the verbs you can find that's absolutely fine um, this is also quite a good one because it's not just putting out one quotation and then leaving it. So I call it the sort of drop and leave of a low scoring essay. They drop a point in and then they leave. And actually what they've done is they've dropped in two points and they've linked them together, which is quite good. So they talk about a fist and why they've used the word fist. And then they talk about pounds and why they've used the word pounds. So it is important and they do go together really well. And I personally think that that is a very good way to do your essays and to structure your essays in order to get above a four. Now, if you're aiming for a nine, it has to be much longer and it has to be much more in depth. So we can see this here. Nature is personified as a fist that shows anger, fury and vexation through the extended metaphor in the poem. Using a fist is a purposefully strong choice to present the dangers of nature by associating it with violence. What a grade nine essay will always have is a real sense of the writer doing things deliberately and crafting a big idea. 
They do this a lot of the time through talking about how an idea is presented over the course of a poem. So each idea really links to the last idea and it really builds up quite nicely. So in addition, this could also symbolise nature as an attacker, linking it again to the fury it displays during natural disasters such as the earthquakes, tsunamis and hurricanes referenced in the middle stanzas. Furthermore, the simile like an old enemy adds to this extended metaphor by presenting nature as an opponent, much like one in a boxing match about to attack or punch. Now, we'll come back to that in a second because I will also show how you could explain that in a slightly different way on another slide. But this one is really good. Another mark of a grade nine essay is putting a lot of quotations that link together in one paragraph and really showing how they link together and showing how they are all a very purposeful choice by the writer. Then we would discuss other choices. So if you're aiming for a grade four plus, you're going to want to look at this slide. If you're aiming for a grade nine or a top grade, then you're going to want to look at the next one. The poet uses personification to describe nature's emotions as angry, furious and vexed and says it shakes, blows and cries. Now, that's good. Don't forget, you can just use one word quotations. You don't have to use really long quotations and waste time, especially if you're not a fast writer and you're aiming for a four plus. If you are writing out huge quotations, you don't have a lot of time to analyse and that's where you're going to get most of your marks. So. This negatively portrays nature as dangerous because these are strong and threatening feelings. Nature may be hitting out because it is angry at the world. The verb shakes is forceful and this shows the writer believes nature attacks when it is angry. So again, zooming in on words is still going to get you those marks. This also links, and I like that also, so they're building this idea that they know that everything links together in a poem. Remember, a poem is tiny, so of course everything has to link together. This also links to the simile like an old enemy, as it shows nature acts out to hurt people like an enemy would. This presents nature as being a threat who is out to get people. In addition, this links to the writer mentioning a wave and a hurricane, as these events are wiping people out like an enemy would in a war or in a boxing match with a punch. The writer is trying to show that nature is powerful because it is wiping out whatever it greets like it has total power. So again, they're not just dropping in points and leaving them. They're including a lot of quotations and that's always really, really good. And it's going to get you much higher marks to do it that way. Now, if you're aiming for a grade nine, each middle stanza begins with an emotion such as anger, fury and vexation before describing a different natural disaster. By using the emotion as a precursor to the disaster, it makes nature sound deliberate and calculating as it reiterates feelings we would associate with causing deliberate harm. Each of these stanzas ends with a simile. The first, shattering us like we were glass, connotes fragility, as does the second, like it was never there, before ultimately calling nature the old enemy. Perhaps this is the writer's way of comparing nature to an opponent in a boxing match as it causes everything to fall or it wipes everything out as though it is winning a match. Now, I've included this for the grade nine because this was actually from a really good essay about this where they were actually talking about structure. Now, I think when you're aiming for a grade nine, a lot of people fall into just talking about structure and just sort of dropping it in and making it not very good because they will talk about line lengths when the line lengths aren't that important or they will talk about the rhyme scheme when they don't actually have a valid point for the rhyme scheme they're just sort of throwing it in because they know that you should be talking about structure if you're aiming for a very high grade this one doesn't look to you perhaps like it is talking about structure but it is it's talking about how each stanza in the middle starts with an emotion that's a structural point and how each stanza in the middle ends with a simile. So again, that is the structure of the poem. The poet is doing that on purpose. They're starting with emotion, they're ending with a simile. They wouldn't have done that unless they were really thinking about it. And then you can see that in the next um, paragraph as well. So in addition, the change from three lines to four in the final stanza could present the unsettling feeling the speaker feels around nature. Linking to the final line, it can hit us when it wants, which cuts off the stanza early. Now, the change from lines from three lines to four could 
present. So look at that in a grade nine essay. Grade nine essays will always have this idea that they are giving you an interpretation. They're not saying it definitely does present this. They're saying it could present that. And then they give me another example. Now, a lot of people seem to think that when you're aiming for a grade nine, you have to give two opposites as examples. So this could be positive because of this, but this could also be negative because of this. And actually, a lot of that feels very forced in because it might just be a positive example and it's not negative at all. And you're just saying it's negative for the sake of putting in an alternative point. That's not going to get you marks. Actually, they've kind of given me an alternative point here by still saying it's dangerous and and threatening, but in a slightly different way. So linking to the final line then leads us into perhaps this represents the total freedom nature has as it can cut the poem short like the lives it destroys through natural disasters. So all of these examples have been from essays that have been particularly high scoring essays or essays that have gotten a grade four plus and they are particularly good because they are showing us something about what we're aiming for so hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what we are looking for in our essays when we are writing in order to get us the marks that we want and I think it's really important to bear in mind that there are lots of clues and there are lots of ways that you can build up these essays too, depending on what you're looking for. And there are lots of mistakes that we want to avoid as well. So if you've liked this video, don't forget to actually like it and to subscribe and to comment if you think there's anything else that is unclear for you about Unseen Poetry. Hopefully I've gone through this a bit like a lesson and hopefully you can take some ideas from this. Now, the poem itself is nice and easy to interpret um, because I actually wrote it. So I know that every single essay that I have given you that I have marked as having a grade nine is something something that as a poet I would absolutely say is totally correct and I could get that from my poem too. Uh, the reason that sometimes I like to write the unseen poems that I ask students to practice is because I think that it allows them to look very deeply at something and tell me their interpretations of what I've written so it's quite a nice little exercise. So Feel free to have a go at finishing this essay as well as a bit of exam practice when your exams start soon.